Hey guys, OG Albine here, bringing you guys my APA Little Cup Wi-Fi Week 8 match against uh, Blinman and his Canberra? Can I, I, I'm not even going to try and say it. His Cradley team. Um, Blin's a really, really good buddy of mine. Be sure to go check him out. He's actually taught me pretty much uh, a good majority of what I know about the Little Cups here and stuff like that. Him and Scott or Silver Seraph, um, I definitely credit to a lot of my major knowledge. And Blin's actually like my main mock man for a good majority of my leagues. He mocks me pretty much every week for IBL. Um, he's mocked for me here if I've needed it, UPBA if I've needed it. So big, big shout out to him. Definitely go check him out if you haven't done so already. He's a really good uh, Little Cup player and he's starting to branch out and upload a lot more leagues. Um, as of right now, like he's uploading UPL Wi Fi, um, NCP Wi Fi Season 2. We uploaded Season 1 if you do remember that or if you're around for then. Um, but yeah, like I said, definitely go check him out. Phenomenal, phenomenal dude, phenomenal coach. Um, but yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into a quick little team breakdown. I'm just going to quickly go over my roster, his roster, and the six sets I'm bringing, then we'll jump right into the battle. Um, so if you did forget, our team consists of the Abra, Scraggy, Hone Edge, Seal, Swine Up, Bonsley, Magby, Flebebe, Teddy Ursa, and P Dub. While Blim's team is very terrifying, it, convinces, it consists of the Ponyard, Cutifly, Crabrawler, Rowlet, Sandy Gas, Slugma, Doduo, Tortuga, Drowsy, and Wimpod. So, like, I, I don't know how he got this team, but he did. Um, Ponyard and Cutifly are terrifying. Um, Doduo is another mod I just don't switch into well at all. Um, Tortuga, if it gets up a shell smash, it kind of just beats me if I don't have my um, few sashes intact. Uh, you know, I'm going with the, the me special and bringing two sash wands again this week. Um, and then uh, Wimpon's annoying. Drowsy is also very hard for my team to break. His team is terrifying. Let's just let's just put it at that. Um, but our way of hopefully combating this terrifying team is going to be our Abra um, rocking out with a modest set, I believe. No, timid. Um, Psychic hidden power fighting energy ball encore focus sash. Uh, you know, very good, you know, just blanket reliable check if he gets up, like, you know, plus two with Ponyard, or if he gets off a shell smash with Tortuga, if we still have our, um, sash attack, we will be able to, you know, revenge those accordingly. Um, then we have a Choice Scarf Draggy, I really like this one in this game, uh, it just, you know, Choice Scarf knockoff, high jump kick, iron head, and drain punch. Um, and then we have our main win con in our Magby. Uh, Berry Juice Belly Jump set with Flame Charge, Mock Punch, and Fire Punch. I uh, didn't really need a coverage move outside of, you know, Flame Charge and Fire Punch. Uh, Mock Punch is really our best way to hit their Tortuga anyways. Um, so I figured that would be our best bet. Um, Wilbur, our Swine Up with the Focus Sash with Ice Shard, Earthquake, Freeze Dry, Stealth Rock. Um, you see right there, it has no EV EVs. Um, that's not on purpose. I did that on accident. You'll see that comes into play later in the battle. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's uh, it's it's pretty bad, but it's pretty funny at the same time too. Um, and then we have a uh, Hone Edge Swords Dance Iron Head uh, Sacred Sword Shadow Claw. I didn't really have enough room to fit Sneak on the set, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to have full power and all those different moves, so uh, that will potentially come into play later, but not too big of a deal. And then we have a Choice Scarf Heat Up. We are bringing this Gross Mon again. Uh, we're bringing a special set this time, though. We're bringing it because I lose to webs if they go up, and while I don't want to be locked into defog when a potential party arc can come in, if I do have to get away um, webs, I will, you know, obviously have to do so with my P dove, um, being that it's our only removal, unfortunately, on this team. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of a mod I just had to bring as a necessary evil. There was a couple other mods I really wanted to bring this matchup otherwise, but uh, nothing you can really, really do um, about that. But yeah, with that being said, let's just jump right into the game. Um, I am going to lead off with my P dove. In case he wants to lead off with the Cutie Fly, I can, you know, potentially just get the thing out. I can now speed with an Air Slash. Um, I can U turn out on like a Wimpod or Air Slash a Wimpod if he wants to lead that and get up spikes. I know Glenn has really favored Wimpod, like a Wimpod lead setting spikes and, you know, getting out of there with emergency exit into one of his, uh, you know, big, big threats. His, you know, hazard stacking kind of game plan has really matched up well for him this season. So I figured my best bet was definitely going P Dove right here. Um, I'm going to pressure both of his hazard setters. Um, this game that weren't Tortuga setting rocks and I guess the um, Sandy Gas setting rocks, but I figured he'd go for the other two hazards first. Um, or the Pawnee Art setting rocks, and I'll definitely hit and power fire that thing because I can live a sucker punch actually. Um, as I am going to lead off with my P Dove, as he does elect to lead off with the Wimpod. Um, in turn one, I'm just going to go for a U turn. I don't want to be locked into Air Slash um, against anything right now, especially with the Pawnee in the back. Maybe if the Pawnee gets weakened, I won't be scared to lock into Air Slash. It's actually pretty decent, um, but with that and the two Tortuga, I'm not going to miss uh, risk that. As uh, I do go um, for the U-turn, as he goes straight for the Scald on my Scraggy coming in. Thankfully, 
we are not burned, which is great as I can get off a Scarf knockoff and actually knock out this uh, Wimpod right here, which is great. Um, don't have to deal with Spikes this game if that thing had it. He was a Sash lead, um, so that's fine. We are going to get our Moxie off. He does know that we are Choice Scarf, however, now, and he is going to be able to go straight into his Pawniard right here, which is terrifying and uh, pretty funny the fact that he can go straight Pawniard on a, uh, um, on a, you know, on a Scraggy right there, but I am going to go into my um, P Dove right here, do figured, you know, not too big of a deal. I know I can live anyone hit from this thing unless he sort of dances up as he goes for the rock polish, which is pretty, pretty scary. When he is going to be able to go for the knockoff, I am going to eat that because P Dove is just ridiculously fat. No, just kidding. And it's going to get off a big hidden power fighting, uh, which is going to put this thing pretty, pretty low, which is great. This was definitely Eviolite based on that damage. Um, if he wasn't, I actually probably would have killed him. But he is going to be able to knock us out with the Iron Head. So if webs go up, they are here to stay. So there's something we have to keep in mind right here. Um, but he is going to be able to knock us out as I am able to go into my Abra screaming that I am a Sash set, but I mean, he has no reason to play around it otherwise. He can just go for the knockoff. We are going to hang on to our Sash as I am going to go for a Hidden Power Fighting, I believe. Um, yeah, and we're going to be able to knock out this Pawniard. So we're kind of going sack for sack at this point in the game. That's just kind of how Little Cup is and how, kind of how my team is, um, oriented in a way, honestly, is just kind of just hitting things hard and... Um, trying to position myself well as he does go for the uh, go into the Tortuga as I am going to go for the energy ball I wish I had taunt over Encore on this set so that he couldn't do what he's about to do right here and set up a ginormous um, Shell smash in my face after the sturdy juice. Uh, I don't know why I brought Encore over taunt I, It didn't make any sense because if he shell smash I'm not gonna be able to taunt him the next turn unless I have my sash up and Taunt is just kind of a better option overall in this situation, in my opinion. Uh, just so he can never even really get the Shell Smash up on me in general. Um, but again, not too big of a deal. He is going to go for a Liquidation. Going to be able to take out my Abra right here. Which is unfortunate, but Abra did its job. Not too big of a deal here. Um, as I am going to go out into my Swino right here. And I know I'm Sash. I know I can bring this thing down to, uh, you know, it's sturdy with an Earthquake. And then potentially Ice Shard it um, afterwards. As he is going to go for the Liquidation bring my um, uh, swine up down right here as I go for the earthquake. However, this is a very big play because of the fact that um, if he has Aqua Jet, I think he wins the game right here. Um, just being the fact that he's plus two and I don't have any more sash in the back, obviously, because I can't. If he has Aqua Jet right here, I don't think I have anything on my team that lives a hit if he has earthquake on his... Uh, um, thing for my Honage, but fortunately he actually told me after the game he did not have it and we are able to knock out the Tertuga right here with an Ice Shard, which is great. It's right here he goes into the Drowsy and in my head I'm thinking, wow, this is, uh, this is phenomenal. This thing can come in, yeah, that's fine, but I can get uh, my Stealth Rocks right here and break any potential Sashes on the Cutie Fly, um, or even if he's like a Sash Palosand or something like that, I can break that Sash and, uh, you know, go out into a subsequent threat such as my, uh, my Scraggy, and I can potentially clean up the game with my Scraggy at this point. Um, I don't know if Cutie Fly would even take a plus one knock after rocks from Scraggy, just because of how, you know, really frail it is, um, unless he's a very bulky Eviolite set. But um, you're going to see right here, he's going to get the Forborn alerted to my Earthquake, whatever, yada, 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 that's all fine. Um, and he's going to go for the Foul Play, and he's going to outspeed us. And this is the point in the match where I realized I didn't have any EVs on my swine up which really sucks because having those rocks up or even getting off an earthquake um i was going for rocks right there but having those rocks up would have been phenomenal um for this game but unfortunately not much i can really do about that as right here he is going to go for the foul play on my honage i don't have shadow sneak on this again keep in mind and unfortunately this is going to be able to a ko so this uh this drowsy is you know turning out to be a really big problem um as i am going to go for the shadow claw unfortunately i cannot shadow sneak and pick him off um, as he is going to go for another foul play, and he's going to knock out our, um, knock out our hone edge, unfortunately. So, uh, the foul play was a really, really good bring on his part, um, just being able to hit things like the hone edge better and stuff like that. Um, but this does let me go free into my Scraggy. I am going to go straight for a knockoff. I'm going to be able to knock out this Drowsy, finally. Um, I don't know, I could have potentially went into it earlier, but, uh... I don't know if it was a roll. I forget. I think it might have been a roll to knock out the Drowsy, depending on its spread. And I didn't want to risk it because I figured this was one of my better win cons. Um, and one of my better ways of breaking through the Palace Hand. As right here, he is going to go into the Cutie Fly. I'm going to stay in and I'm going to knock. Reason being uh, that I can knock off the potential Sash, which he actually ended up being. Um, and he's going to be able to go for the Moon Blast and knock me out. However, this gives me a free switch into my Magby. And that's going to be my best way of winning at this point. If I can get up a Belly Drum with my Magby, um, if he's not like max, max defense Eviolite, uh, 
Palisand, I can kill him with a plus six fire punch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight for a belly drum. I know I can with any hit. If this isn't the speed tie I really care about winning, it's the next one after this is the one I'm really concerned about winning that speed tie. So I'm going to get my berry juice, go all the way back up to full, and then we're going to get off a big, big belly drum right here, which is phenomenal. Um, and if we can win this next speed tie, we basically win the game at this point, which is great. Um, but if he does outspeed me, I believe he can knock us out with a hidden power ground, depending on rolls. I think he'd need like a min roll to knock, knock us out. But you're going to see right here, we do get off the... Uh, the flame charge and we are able to outspeed the um cutie fly on a speed tie and we are going to be able to knock that sucker out um actually i don't know if it was a speed tie i totally forget if cutie fly is uh you know is, is 19 speed i don't think it is i think no it was a speed tie because he outsped us the first time but we are going to be able to get a plus six fire punch off on the uh sandy gas and we're going to be able to knock it out excuse me for being sloppy right there at the end of my commentary um but yeah we are able to pick up a slim 1-0 victory on blin very very close game a couple blunders on both of our ends um when he told me after the game that he really doesn't know why he didn't bring a you know aqua gen on the tortuga um which is fine we all oversee things in prep but most of the time we don't uh you know forget to ev our mons in whole which definitely uh you know cost me big time i potentially could have just swept the game with scraggy right there at that point honestly um but again it happens not the end of the world we were able to still pick up the big dub right here um bring ourselves to eight and oh i believe uh keep our streak going i believe we're pretty much we're definitely clinch for playoffs i don't think we're clinch for first seed yet but we're looking very nice if we win the next two games obviously we will be the first seed and um you know potentially be able to go on from there which would be phenomenal but great game to blend um he's having a great season himself so i definitely recommend again you go check him out see how he's doing with his run his team is disgusting like i said as you can see on the screen it's terrifying and he didn't even bring stuff like the do duo and, uh, you know, mods like that, so, uh, definitely was, you know, dodge a bullet and beating him this week, but, uh, yeah, again, great game to my opponent, um, thank you guys so much for watching, be sure to subscribe so you can catch our battles as they go up for this league and all the other ones that we're playing in right now, um, and I will catch you guys later.